All right, let's go ahead and have a look at five. Okay. Now, in your books, we really struggled with this one, so I reckon you should all draw it. Some of you got it right, but <laughs> somewhat by fluke. So let's all draw a little version in your books, okay? Um, and with, with questions that have a diagram, um, drawing the diagram is often the first step to knowing what the answer is. Okay. So I think we have this kind of shape. You got a right angle there, and then you got some numbers. And I did have to correct that, it used to say 10. Okay. Now most of you got that you had to at least add 6, 4, and 9, because you're asked to find the perimeter, okay, which means the whole way around that shape. But then that leads the question, leaves the question, what's this, um, oh, where's my blue one? Seriously, there you go, here we go. Um, that leaves the question, well, what's this side? Okay. Now the answer is fine, but the question is, how do you actually get there? I didn't require you to show the working. But the way you get there is Pythagoras. Now, what clue in the diagram tells you that Pythagoras is the way to go? It's the right angle, isn't it? Because Pythagoras is about right angled triangles. Okay? So what you can see is that you've got your four over here. So if you think about this as the opposite side of the rectangle, you've got four here as well. Okay? Now you have to do a bit of subtraction here, right? You got six and nine. So the difference that is that little length there, right? So that's why it'll be nine minus six, which is just three. That's three. Okay. Now, supposing if you couldn't remember, you know, that three, four, five will give you a right angle triangle, you know, suppose you gave this some name like say x, right? If you wanted to, and if they asked you to, if they wanted to set it out, you'd say 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. That's Pythagoras' theorem in this triangle. Okay? So you might even say Pythagoras' theorem. Okay? So that's 9 plus 16. I'll just switch them around to the other side. That's 25. So that's why you get x equals 5 because we're only interested in the positive value. Minus 5, negative 5 is a solution to that, but we don't want it. Okay. So, you, are you asking about this or this? You had 25 and you just went to straight to 5. Yeah, so I'm thinking of what, what's the number that when I multiply it by itself, square it, right? What number will, when I do that, will give me 25? 5. And the answer is 5. And alternatively, you go to your calculator and you could put in the square root button there, okay? And that'll give you, that'll also give you 5, okay? So once you know that that is 5, that was, I believe, the first mark to get that distance, and then you just add them up. You just add them up. You say the perimeter is 6 plus 4 plus 9 plus 5, which gave you um, 24, whatever units they were. Okay? See this, um, this line here, right? That's here. Now, the thing is, there's two answers to this. There's not just one answer. There's two. Because... If I say, well, what's minus 5, negative 5, squared, that's still 25, right? So it's like, how do I know? Is it this one, or is it, is it 5, or is it negative 5? Now, the reason why I can know it's, it can't be negative 5 is because I'm talking at a distance here, right? Sometimes negative 5 is meaningful. Like if I was trying to find temperature or the location of something, 5 might mean to the right, and minus, negative 5 might mean to the left. But here, I just want to know how long the thing is. And you can't be negative five long. Yeah. It's just going to be that one. Okay. So I meant um, I meant greater than. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 